Hi, this is Miss Slitton, and this is with my wonderful period three AP bio class, and we're recording today's discussion because of who? Emma. And anybody who is not here today, just Emma asked. Um, so say hi to Emma. Hi. Okay, here we go. So chapter 42 um, on animal development, this is not a topic that is mandated by the College Board for you to know, except for little aspects of it. Okay, but again, I will give you the support material so you can understand those aspects. If you look at the notes, you see how some of it is mini, me, and tiny, and some of it is normal size. So it's the normal size that you need to know. Okay, the normal size that you need to know. So this uh, this uh, chapter, um, when we talk about development, you'll see at the very end of the notes, I have a whole lot of uh, human development and stages and trimesters and weeks. You don't need to know the end of that, okay? So that's why it's all mini mead out. So the big question we're trying to answer is how do we get from here to here? And if you could just take a moment to appreciate when a sperm fertilizes an egg, okay? The sperm is haploid, the egg is haploid, and they form a diploid zygote. How many cells big is a zygote? One. But you, my friend, are trillions of specialized cells. How did they become different? How did they go onto a pathway that knew to be heart or lung, okay, or your eyeball, when you came from a single solitary cell? Okay, that's what we're trying to wrap our brain around in this particular topic. So why is this the unit that I threw this chapter into? Because we know every cell in our body contains the exact same what? DNA, right? I'm just cutting to the chase, hashtag spoiler alert, okay? Every cell in our body contains the exact same DNA. Comparing prokaryotes to eukaryotes, what kind of control mechanisms do most eukaryotes use? Positive control. What do we use in positive control? Not so much repressors, but transcription factors right so if you can kind of stitch it together what's in the nucleus is the same it's your dna it's your genetic code book right for you it is the same what influences which of those genes are transcribed and translated would be what transcription factors so what must be different in the cells transcription that's the long and the short of what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so let's start from where it starts. Let's start with ovulation. So ovulation is when an egg pops out of an ovary. If that egg is going to get fertilized, it has to happen within, you know, 12, maybe 16 hours of when it pops out of your ovary. Now, it's like a leap of faith because it's jumping out of the ovary and into the oviduct, and there's little fimbriae that kind of bring a current to get the egg to go into your oviduct, and it's gonna take it multiple days to travel down the oviduct and implant in your uterus. It is only viable for that short, let's say 12 hours, so sperm better be there, usually already. Now, I will say to you, you can have sex on Tuesday, and you can fertilize an egg on a Friday. And the reason is, when the sperm make their way up into an oviduct, they could stay there for a few days just waiting. Some people's sperm could last like four or five days and they're just waiting for an egg to pop out. And when that egg is like sex on Tuesday, still waiting, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday shows around and you ovulate, out pops the egg and then the sperm are like, hmm, and they're racing to be the first one there, okay? You are not considered pregnant until that fertilized egg makes its way down your oviduct, which will take about five days, and implant itself in the uterus. Now, do you remember when we talked about cytokinesis and we compared and contrasted spermatogenesis with oogenesis? And we said in spermatogenesis, every time you do meiosis, you will tr try to make four functional sperm, right? But for eggs, it's what it, it was unequal, right? And you would make one large egg and three little, two or three little what? Polar. Polar bodies, which disintegrate. The reason why they have to do that is because the whole time you're traveling down the oviduct and waiting to implant into the uterus to get some nutrients, you have to have food for that developing zygote. 
Okay, does that make sense? All right, so here's ovulation. Here's what it really looks like. Here's a when you're ovulating, okay? Um, we're gonna ping pong back and forth. Oldest, you go first. Explain this slide, go ahead. Switch. The acrosome literally looks like a beanie cap that the sperm are wearing. It's like fatto, you know, it's like pulled low. And then when it hits the egg, it releases the enzyme packet and it's digesting through what's called the zona pellucida, which is this jelly coat, which sounds to me like a summer girl band concert series. Um, and and it's, it's like, it's first or nothing. So there, all the sperm, these are all sperm all over this egg, all working, and outside of the zona pellucida is actually called the corona radiata, which are leftover follicular cells from inside the ovary. But then they have to get through the zona pellucida and be the first one to tag and make connection, sperm cell membrane, egg cell membrane. That's what has to happen. Okay, switch again, go. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a, a little short video here, and we get we have at some point a GoPro sperm. <laughs> Watch out for white blood cells because. Female bodies consider these guys invaders. Yes, there are some two-headed sperm. Remember, they go for quantity over quality. Tinkerbell nucleus, he's inside the egg now. Okay, so that is the sperm cell nucleus, which is gonna fuse with the egg cell nucleus, and then you will have your diploid zygote. Now, did you see when that one sperm, <laughs> that one sperm, when he hit the egg, it was like the whole thing went purple. Do you remember that? Okay, so that's something called the fast block which it's like whoever got in there first, it's almost like a depolarization of the egg cell membrane, and it makes it so no other sperm can get in there. It's just a very short-term thing. And then you have what's called the slow block, which develops, which actually kind of makes almost like a wall to prevent any other sperm. Because otherwise, you get two sperm in there, you got a mutant into turtle, right? It's not gonna develop well. Um, so I don't know whose turn it was to do this, but the other bio buddy now, it's go. Okay, and switch again. I talked about this. Look for the beanie. And switch one more time. Look for things you know. Okay, now, what I don't like about this is it looks like the sperm's um, flagella is coming in there. It's not. It stays outside, okay? Now, what I want to teach you 
is first like the what happened and then we'll talk about the how okay so the what before the how so development are all the changes during the life cycle now I am still developing because part of developing is actually what aging getting old yeah that's part of the whole life cycle right there's things are breaking down in me because they're old I probably can't get rid of DNA is probably the problem, the housekeeping, and that is one of the things that contributes to our aging process. But it's from the beginning all the way to the end. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you the steps. I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? And then I'm gonna teach you a little way song to remember it, okay? And we will take notes on it after that. So I wanna do the walkthrough first, so just don't type, don't do it, just focus and just listen up to me and then and we'll, I promise you we'll talk about it. Now, do you remember when we talked about viruses, how I taught you like the basic lytic cycle and then we look for modifications? Okay, so I'm, ta I'm teaching you a basic cycle and then I'm gonna tell you how it gets modified okay, as a result. So I'm gonna start, the reason what affects it the most is how much yolk you have because that's gonna influence the process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this almost like tiny, small, little clear fish. His name is a lancelet. And he has no yolk. And so it's really easy to see his cells move around. All right, so first thing is this, okay? The sperm fertilizes the egg and you have this diploid zygote. Now, the steps of the cell cycle, okay? What are the steps of the cell cycle, please? Tell me. G1, what happens during G1? And? Or organelle. What's next? And what happens during S? And then, and you're making proteins, and then you go through the M stage, right? Which is mitosis and cytokinesis. Right after the sperm fertilizes the egg, do you remember the word cleavage as in cleavage furrow? Okay. They call this stage cleavage. It's undergoing undergoing cleavage. It is doing the complete cell cycle. G1, S, G2. M, G1, S, G2, M. But the thing is, it's blowing through G1. So as a result of blowing through, you, through G1, the cells are not getting bigger, okay? So if you look at this zygote right here at the top, here it's four cells, it's not much bigger. Here it's eight cells, it's not much bigger. It's probably 32 or 64 cells going here, still not much what? bigger okay so it's repeat mitosis and cell division is cleavage it will eventually form what's called a solid ball of cells okay so it's just this little ball of cells and that solid ball of cells is called a marula when you have a solid ball of cells now let's flip in a little bit of osmosis in here those cells start to pump salt in the um, intracellular spaces at the center so now you create this salty environment. What do you know will follow salt? Water. And what it does is it takes this solid ball of cells and blows it up into a hollow ball of cells, which is called a blastula, okay? Now, here at this blastula stage, you have a cavity inside the blastula called a blastocele. That's the space that's right here. Now here's where the paths will diverge for humans. So I'm gonna come back to the human path in a minute. Let's just stay with this little lancelet fish, okay? He's this hollow ball of cells. Do you remember when you were a kid and you played with those red rubber playground balls? Do you know what I mean, like dodgeball and star kickball with those red soft balls? Did you ever see one that got deflated? Okay, so I want you to imagine one of those red rubber playground balls, like I'm holding it, and I'm letting the gas out of it so I could actually put it on my head like a hat. You probably saw somebody do that. And his name was probably John. Okay, now, <laughs> no, when you put it, feign to deny it. Okay, so when you put it on your head, right, it is now layered. Do you agree with me on that? Because I've let the air, and so it's holding back on itself, and it's a layered ball of cells. That layered ball of cells, that layered ball of cells is called a gastrula. Now, initially, there are only two layers. Right? Think about the red rubber playground ball. But in between the outer and the inner layer, ectoderm and endoderm, in between those is something called the mesoderm that starts to develop. How, the way it originates, depends on what kind of animal you are, but you end up getting three layers, okay? 
The last step of all of this in these stages of development that we focus on, as far as the what, is your spinal cord form. And what's interesting about it is when you have this layered ball of cells, when this spinal cord forms, I'm gonna jump ahead and show you a picture, okay? There is a tissue that's part of the middle layer, the mesoderm, and what it does is it gets the outer layer, the ectoderm, so this tissue in the middle is yelling at the layer above it to start folding in on itself like this. And it forms what's called a neural tube. And that becomes your spinal cord, okay? Now, on top of that, this notochord right here, here it's influencing the tissue above it, okay? So, so that cord right there, oh, here. This notochord right here in pink actually becomes your vertebrae, which grow up and around your neural tube, your spinal cord, in order to protect it. Now, this is a part of development, not the what part, but the how part, is when one tissue influences another tissue, it's like peer pressure. I'm making her do this because I'm telling her to do it. That is called induction. And I remember induction because I think induction and influence, they both start with what? I. So one tissue influences another tissue. That is it. That's the how part. That's called induction. When this happens, you have a stage which is called the neurula. Okay. Once you have your spinal cord form, here's another example of a neurula forming. You can see the blue ectoderm, the yellow endoderm, the pink mesoderm. The notochord right here is influencing the tissue above it to fold in, okay? Now, there's more on that that I wanna talk to you about, okay? But I wanna teach you a little way to remember it, okay? You ready? Here's your egg. Everybody has an egg. Today, you all have an egg. Here comes Mr. Happy Sperm. Have him swim, okay? Mr. Happy Sperm is haploid, and the egg is also what? Haploid. When the sperm fertilizes the egg, you form a diploid. Yes, zygote. Okay. Here comes Mr. Happy Sperm. Haploid. Here's the egg. Also haploid. Sperm fertilizes the egg, forming a diploid zygote. Then you're going to go cleavage, cleavage, cleavage. <laughs> Notice our hands are still the same size, right? We're making. And you go like this, cleavage, 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 do it one more time, cleavage, cleavage, cleavage. You form a solid ball of cells called a marula. Do it. Solid ball of cells called a marula. Then we pump in salt, do two pumps, because I don't know another way to do it. And then you will form a blast, yes, blast now, blastula, okay? And a blastula is a hollow ball of cells. Do it again. Hollow ball of cells. Why do I do that? Because your brain likes to associate movement with memory. That's why we do that, right? Okay, here we go again. Here comes Mr. Happy Sperm. He is what? Haploid. And the egg is haploid. Sperm fertilizes the egg. We form a diploid zygote. Cleavage, cleavage, cleavage. And we have a solid ball of cells called a marula. We pump in salt. Who follows? water and you have a blastula and a blastula is a hollow ball of cells now the cavity inside the blastula is called a blastocele this is what we're going to do i'm going to say the cavity inside is called a and make a little blast blast and then seal your fingers back together the seal okay what's the cavity inside called a blastocele good then we're going to let out the gastrula okay see how we did that okay we're here blastula we are letting out the gastrula we're thinking about that red rubber playground ball right put on our head okay but we're not sorry okay yeah uh, let out the um gastrula and we form a layered ball of cells layered ball of cells at first two layers so it's like i see my fingers as being one layer and my thumbs being the second layer do you see that so the outermost layer is called the ectoderm, and the innermost layer is called the endoderm, okay? So do layered ball of cells, layered ball of cells. At first, two layers, 
and then three. Okay, do it again. At first two layers, and then three. Put a pin in that, we're gonna learn about those layers later, come back to this. What happened to our blastocele? Went away, right? It got smished between the ectoderm and the endoderm, right? We have a new cavity inside. If you look right here, you can see this new cavity inside. That new cavity is called the archenterum. Say it. Archenterum. Now I remember that? My thumbs look like an arch. Arch, arch, okay? Archenterum, okay? Now, let me tell you what that archenterum became. It became your gut tube, the tube that runs from your mouth to your anus. That cavity became your gut tube. The opening right here to this gut tube, that opening is called a blastopore. For some animals, that blastopore becomes the indoor to your gut tube, which you would know as your mouth. For other animals, it becomes the outdoor to their gut tube, which you know as your anus. And by the way, you are sitting on your blastopore right now. Okay? For you, you are called deuterostomes. The way you develop, okay, your blastopore becomes your anus and a new mouth has to form separately. All right? So, from the beginning, and then we'll add that part on, here comes Mr. Happy's sperm, and he is what? Haploid, and here's the egg, she is haploid. We have fertilization forming a diploid zygote. Cleavage, cleavage, cleavage. We form a solid ball of cells called a marula, pump and salt. Who follows? Water, and we have a blastula. What is a blastula? A hollow ball of cells. What do you call the cavity on the inside? A blastocele. Do you know what day it happens in human development? Day five. Mm, day five. Okay. Now, now we let out the gastrula and we form a layered ball of cells. At first, two, and then three. Okay. Come back here. What's your new cavity called? Archenteron. And the opening to the archenteron, we're going to use our elbow. We're going to go blastopore. We are using our elbow to point to our butt, okay? Give it a little kick, okay? Blastopore. Good. We have one last stage to form, the nerula. Okay, say it. Nerula. nerula. Looking at your thumbs, your thumbs are going to represent the notochord for us, and they get the tissues above it to fold in. Bring in your fingernails like this, okay? And now you form the nerula. Nerula, okay? Now, do you know how to make a cursive N? Yes. yes. How many humps does it have? Yes. Look at your nerula. How many oh, humps do you see? Yo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two. <laughs> nerula. That's wild. Be cursive. Okay? What? Okay. <laughs> All right. So those, we want to, I've already foreshadowed to you. That's the what. <coughs> I've already foreshadowed the how. I just want to give you one more piece before we write this down because I know you'll understand it. The notochord got the tissue above it to fold in. Okay? When it tissues move around, that's called morphogenesis. Morph, shape, genesis, what? Beginning, right? That's called morphogenesis. When one tissue influences another, it's induction. When they actually do whatever you influence them to do, that's morphogenesis. How does one tissue influence another tissue? Through morphogens. Morphogens are what do we use to control gene expression in eukaryotes? Transcription factors. Morphogens are transcription factors turning genes on or off in their absence. Okay. So, on your notes, go to your notes. You have um, cellular stages of development. A marula is a solid ball of cells as a, repeat, as a result of repeated cell division. A blastula is a what? Hollow ball of cells. The blastocele is the cavity inside. 
Now, do you see where it says inner cell mass? You there? Okay. So let me tell you, in humans, it's a, in humans, it's slightly different because in humans, when you get to the blastula stage, okay, with, within the blastula itself is a little mass of cells called the inner cell mass. This inner cell mass actually becomes the baby and these cells around the outside, where does the, what does the baby need to get nutrients? What do you have to develop? Uh, starts with a P, placenta. placenta, an associated membrane. So that's how we are different, okay, with that inner cell mass. Now, the layers that I told you about, well, that went to the wrong slide. That's funny. Hello, pregnant lady. Okay, layers, let's go to the layers. That's funny, and so is that slide. Okay, they already know what each of the layers are going to become. Come back to here to your three layers. What is the outermost layer called? Ectoderm, innermost layer? What did I tell you the endoderm was gonna become? Your gut, right, your gut too. Tell me. What two systems can you access through your mouth? Digestive and respiratory. Your digestive and respiratory organs come, and any organs or glands associated with them come from your endoderm. They already know that. Okay. Your ectoderm. What is the outermost part of you? Skin. Skin. And in particular, it's the epidermis. There's dermis that comes from the mesoderm. We're not going to worry about that, but the epi, the top comes from your ectoderm. Now, rub your arm right here. How can you tell you're rubbing your arm? I already told you the nervous system, neurua, comes from the ectoderm. So here's the ticket. As long as you know what the endoderm makes and the ectoderm makes, then anything else must come from the mesoderm. So if I say heart, the heart is not nervous system or skin. It is not digestive or respiratory system. So the heart must come from the mesoderm. Okay? Think what's in the middle of your arm? Muscles and those are gonna come from your mesoderm. How about your reproductive organs? Mesoderm, okay, because it's not your skin. How about the lens of your eye? Ectoderm, because the lens of your eye is part of your nervous system, okay? So they know what everything is going to be, even when you're that. It hasn't differentiated into that tissue yet, but it is already determined to be that tissue. Okay, yes? So is that the only part, or is that literally, at that stage, that's what the egg has become? Or is that the entire egg? Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that. And then it will just keep on baby being baby from that? Yes. Okay, so go to your notes where it says layers. Ectoderm is the outer layer and it will form what system? Nervous, Nervous system. system. The epidermis, lens of eye. Okay, oh did I skip something? What did I skip? Oh, it develops into the baby. Develops into a baby. And then tissue stage of development, the gastrula is a layered ball of cells as a result of invagination. The ectoderm will be the outer layer. It will form your nervous system, epidermis and lens of eye. And mesoderm, um, youngest bio buddy, tell them what it says for mesoderm. Musculoskeletal, cardiovascular, excretory, and reproductive systems. Okay, then your endoderm, okay, your endoderm, well, here's another picture here. Your endoderm is the inner layer, will form the epithelial linings of the digestive and respiratory system and associated organs and glands. And associated organs and glands. The archenteron is the new inner cavity because the blastocele is gone. And the archenteron will become your gut tube. The blastopore is the opening into the archenteron. And it will either become a mouth 
or what? Anus. For us, it's only anus. It's not like, oh, my glass broke again in this. For us, it's only anus. We're classified as deuterostome. Us and echinodermata. Echinodermata are things like starfish. Their blastopore also becomes their anus. Okay? Things like worms and grasshoppers and things like that, they are um, protostomes, and their blastopore becomes their mouth. It's a developmental thing. Okay, um, organ stage of development, the nerula. Okay, the nerula is when the nervous system forms from the ectoderm, the neural plate, and then the neural tube. The neural plate, and then the neural tube. The anterior end will become the brain, the rest will become the spinal cord. Okay, the neural crest is a band of cells. Oh, actually, oldest one. You tell them now. Is it old's turn? Go so old. Neural crest. Okay, and that's induced to form by the notochord. So the notochord gets it to happen. Okay, now, one thing that's different about this process is how much yolk you have. Okay, so a lancelet, that clear fish, has hardly any yolk at all. Um, a chicken egg has a ton of yolk. This whole thing happens as like a little disc on top of that yellow yolk. Um, a frog has an intermediate amount of yolk. So its movement of cells is going to vary depending on how much yolk it has. So here we're going to go through quickly the early stages of development again. And then we're going to get to this stage when Cleavage. the germ layers are set aside. The Marula, three germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, blastula. and endoderm. So here you'll see then that the inner cell mass gives rise to the entire adult animal, in this case a human. This same process would occur in a mouse as we'll see a bit later. If we now look at the embryo after the three germ layers have formed, this video will highlight what comes from the blue germ layer of the ectoderm. You'll see that it makes the nervous system, including the brain, and the skin. The middle part, the mesoderm, green here, gives rise to the muscle, including the kidneys, the heart, and the endoderm gives rise to the whole gut tube. There you see the lung, the liver, the intestine. Now you're seeing the neurula. And to give one more Watch it. Example of this. Let's the think nerula, about the development the of the brain. endoderm, and in this case, the formation of the pancreas. So there's the pancreatic bud, which comes out of the endodermal derivative. Not it. Not it. Tell them what you learned. Summarize it up. Okay, let me jump in there again. I want to talk to you about what somites are. Okay, take a look. Here's your neural tube. This is tissue here on either side. Discuss with your bio buddy why did some skeletal muscle become limb, appendicular, part of your appendicular skeleton, and why part of your axial skeleton, body wall skeletal muscle? What was the difference between those two? You should not be able to understand that. Go ahead. So why were they different? What, what do you think PAX3 is? When it says expressing PAX3, what must PAX3 be? Not a protein, a gene, which will then code for proteins. So look right here. This cell is expressing the what? PAX7, and it's going to be skeletal muscle, the type of muscle that you would see on your skeleton as opposed to body wall muscle, you have still PAX7, but in addition, what? PAX3. Differential gene expression, right? Determining what pathway you're gonna go down developmentally. 
So somites are midline mesodermal tissue that does not become notochord. So it's part of the mesoderm that's not notochord to longitudinal masses of tissues and they section off into somites. And I'll show you some more somites in a little bit. The somites will become muscles associated with the axial skeleton in segmentation, in segmentation. Okay, and I gotta tell you, I have a ton of like review games and stuff, but we can do those if you wanna come to the open seventh period today and I have a bunch of questions and stuff we can do. If you wanna to come to the seventh period today, we'll, we'll do those for review. Okay, but right now I need to transition into the how, okay? which you've already learned a big portion of the how. There's just a few key things I need to get in your head, okay? The first thing here on the how, okay, is there are three big developmental processes um, that take place. So, um, developmental, development requires three interconnected processes, three interconnected processes. Cellular differentiation. And this is basically cell specialization in both structure and function. So they become what they were supposed to be, what they were determined to be. It also involves morphogenesis, which produces the shape and form of the body. <coughs> shape and form of the body and later pattern formation. And lastly, apoptosis, okay, which is cell death. Okay, and those are the three boxes that we need to discuss, of which some of these we have already talked about. So the first one is this specialization, becoming specialized. We know ultimately it's because you're going to be acti activating certain genes. Now, just be with me right here. Take a look at this slide. We already talked about that. What is the same in every one of your cells? DNA. DNA. So what must be different is out in the cytoplasm. Most of what's out in the cytoplasm comes from the mother because the father contributes so little other than the head of the sperm. Do you hear me on that one? It's not a judgment call, it's just the way it is. When a cell has full developmental potential, okay, like for instance, for us, you could go from one cell to two cells. You could separate those two cells out, each would develop into a perfectly normal baby. That's called totipotency or being totipotent when you have full developmental potential. We lose that after a few more divisions. If you start separating, you're not gonna make a baby. Some organisms like mollusks lose their totipotency after the very first division. One cell becoming two, if you separate them out, only one will develop um, normally, if at all. They may both develop abnormally. Okay, so we have this early, early on Okay, and this is where twins come from that are identical, right? You had totipotent cells that got divided early on and both developed into a fully functioning human. If it had happened a little later, they would have been joined at the hip, okay, or something else, or not formed at all. Now, remember what we said, in eukaryotes, where does most of our control come from? Transcription factors. So let's pretend that these red and green dots are just a simplification of transcription factors, okay? After the first division, who, which cell has a higher ratio of red to green? Higher ratio of red to green? Bottom one, right? Right now, there's a difference between these two cells, which could set them on different differential pathways, okay? After another division, who has the highest ratio of red to green? Bottom right. Okay, now let's talk about why are there differences. Touch the top of your head right here, the very top center, okay? This is where your father's sperm penetrated your mother's egg. Where that happens becomes your anterior region. At the point, site of sperm penetration, that's your head. Okay, now your head is different front, back. Your head is different. If you look at this, here's another difference. Where the yolk is, that becomes the ventral region of an organism. And where there's less yolk, that is the dorsal. So if you think right here, the front of your face, there was sperm and there was yolk. The back of your face was sperm and 
No, yes. And if I simplify this out for you, okay, to see the differences, here comes Mr. Happy Sperm, okay? So we can already make a difference between these two halves. This half has sperm, this one has, no. This will be the anterior region, and this will be the posterior, where your feet are, okay? And then also, you have yolk. Where you have yolk, this is called the vegetal, not vegetable, vegetal pole, and this will be your ventral, your front ventral. The opposite is dorsal, and this is called the animal pole. So right now, we already have four quadrants. If we look here, this quadrant has sperm plus, what else does it have in this quadrant? Yolk. Yolk. This one has sperm. What does this have? Nothing. What does this one have? Yolk. Do you see how there are differences right away in the cytoplasm? Those are going to turn different genes on and off. Okay? So on your notes, go to your notes, where it says cytoplasmic or number one. No, 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 no. Cellular differentiation. Every cell contains the exact same DNA and are totipotent at first. Two mechanisms lead to cellular differentiation. One is cytoplasmic segregation. I talk about sperm penetration, I talk about the poles. Cleavage cytokinesis will separate the ooplasmic female proteins. Okay? How much developmental potential you have, okay? Oh, by the way, they, the opposite side of sperm penetration right here is the gray crescent. Do you remember when we talked about a gastrula? That happens at the gray crescent. No gray crescent, then you will not form a gastrula and you'll just be a solid ball of cells. There are three terms. I said totipotency is full developmental potential. If you are pluripotent, go away. If you are pluripotent, these, that's the inner cell mass that gives rise to the baby. But then once they start becoming their parts, immune system, nervous system, circulatory system, they are unipotent. What does unipotent mean? One, yeah. So that is your next part where it has totipotent, pluripotent, the ICM, gives rise to all the cells of the embryo, and unipotent can develop in only along one line. Induction, I already explained this to you. It's when one tissue influences the development of another, either by direct contact or release of chemicals or morphogens. Is so weird why they do that. Okay. And it seems to it seems to activate certain genes by generating transcription factors. It seems to activate certain genes by generating transcription factors. Then I talked to you about the gray crescent. Um, go down to II, I said the notochord induces brain development. Okay, so one chemical turns on some genes. Now these genes make another chemical, another morphogen, a transcription factor, which turns on another gene, and so on and so on. Okay, morphogenesis, Morphogenesis is described as the movement of cells that changes the shape and form of body parts. And though there are so many different types of animals, they share a common set of genes. A common set of genes. So there are homeotic genes that code for homeodomain proteins. This is the part that is universal like RNA polymerase binds to the promoter. This is one of those universal deals. 
And so you can look right here at a mouse and a fruit fly, and they have the same genes, hawks one, hawks two, hawks three, hawks four. So it's like that gene, for instance, the green one that you see there, they all have that green in that one segment, that is going to be the head, whatever head you have. A head like a mouse or a head like a fruit fly, it turns on the head gene. So that develops there, okay? So on your examples where it says share common sets of genes, um, go to the very last part of your notes where it says homeotic genes, often called the selector genes because they select for segmental identity dictating body parts, dictating body parts. They are highly conserved, meaning that they are found in many animal genomes. Okay, highlight homeotic genes because I want you to know this part for the test, besides the stages of development. They contain a segment called homeobox genes, Hox genes, the code for our home, you know, domain proteins that are what? Transcription factors. Apoptosis, you know, is also a part of development, like to lose the tadpole tail or the space between our fingers. If that doesn't happen, that causes problems, okay? This is an analogy that may or may not work for you. Just to, in closing, discuss this analogy with your bio buddy. Go ahead. Okay, so remember, morphogenesis and movement go together. That's when the cells are moving around. That's morphogenesis. It is caused by morphogens. Those morphogens are probably transcription factors affecting Hox genes. Okay, and, and when one tissue influences another, it's induction. Again, I have a lot of little practices and games. If you want to come by seven period today, we can do the questions and you can do little games for review if you would like. Okay? Have a great day. And that is the end.